Okay, hopefully I can get this done in time because I have a job interview later. Um, and we'll see how that goes. Um, so we have chapter 1110. 1110. <sighs> Boy. Side note, I actually tried to look up what like 1110 meant in binary. And I really couldn't get a distinctive answer. I kept trying to convert it to decimals. I'm like, that doesn't help me. Um, so, oh well. Um, so, going into the chapter, first we have the cover page. So, um, well, the name of the chapter is uh, Planet Fall. Which I'm like, oh, that sounds fun. Um, no. Uh, so, the name of the cover page series that we're going to be getting seems to be Oni Child Yamato and the Holy Inari uh, Shrine Pilgrimage. Uh, that seems to be the name of it. Um, so a lot of people who thought, well, the next cover page sort of series will be about, like, Yamato going around Wano. Probably. We'll probably get some other additional things added in here with, uh, this cover page currently has Yamato talking to Momonosuke. And probably just after, like, Yam Momonosuke just finished, like, dropping Onigashima into the ocean, uh, into the water. <laughs> I was like, let's not crush ancient Wano. It might be worth preserving. Um... <laughs> But we'll see. Um, Miyamoto looks pretty excited. Momonosuke is just kind of like, okay. Um, I mean, Momonosuke, I mean, Yamato did want to go and look around, you know, Wano and travel around Wano and stuff like that. It's like, you know, I was like, I'm going to travel all over Wano, just like Odin. I'm like, you know, that's kind of, you know, why Yamato, you know, kind of played off being able to stay in Wano. Because it's like, I want to do like what Odin did. So I'm going to travel across Wano first and then I'll travel the outside world. Okay. Um, and as, um, sometimes naive as Momonosuke is, uh, I think that Momonosuke is kind of onto the fact that y Yamato stayed because of what happened with Green Bull. Because of seeing how hard it was for Momonosuke and the Scabbards to fight against Green Bull. I think he's kind of figured that out. Um, but that's why Yamato stayed instead of going with the Straw Hats. Which, by a technicality, is not a bad reason for why Yamato stayed. But, into the actual chapter. Um, so, the first page, or the first bit that we get is this outside view of Egghead with all the different marine ships. We see the cyberized giraffe sea beast with uh, bluegrass and doll on it still swimming around the island, making their way to the other side where the giant ship will be. I think it's the northeast side, um, I think is what they said. And that's where they're headed. We see all of the black lightning um, covering up part of the sky as, you know, the different circles were appearing on the island at the end of last chapter. Um, and Bluegrass seems a bit befuddled by what's going on. She's like, what in the world? And, I mean, given how old Bluegrass looks, I'm sure she's seen a lot. This may not be her first Buster call. We didn't see her listed under anything when it came to what happened at O'Hara, so I don't think she was involved in O'Hara. Um, but this is not her, this may not be her first Buster call, like this is not her first rodeo, then again, pretty much she can turn any battle she's into, in a road, into a rodeo, considering she can then control something from it. Um, and we see other Marines who are watching from the ships as they're seeing all this black lightning fill the island. That's like, it's, it's just like when St. Saturn arrived. So, they obviously cannot see what's going on at the moment um, in regards to, like, they're not allowed to see, like, these lower-ranked ones, they're not allowed to see what St. Saturn looked like. They are certainly not going to be allowed to see what the other four Goros they all look like as well uh, in this regard <laughs> um, without worrying about their heads getting blown off. Um, we cut to where we have um, Bonnie, Frankie, Atlas, and pr uh, I believe the... Kuma PX0 is there. We just don't see him here. I think he's being held by one of the other giants. Um, but we see Bonnie and Frankie being held by uh, one of the giants that we saw. The one that has like the very bushy beard and such. Um, and Bonnie's like, I hope everyone's okay. Because they're all looking up and seeing like the black lightning filling the sky. Um, 
and from there we cut to just outside the island or on the ring of the island again so we're getting like an update on like where the giants are at this point in time around the ring of the island um, we see that um, at least a couple of giants have shown up and are attacking some of the battleships that are there alongside one of the pacifista now the pacifista have not been ordered to do anything against the giants i think they're just ordered to do stuff against the marines at the moment based on what bonnie told them to do uh one of the giants seems to have a bar and arrow and he's firing it at one of the ships another one of the giants is attacking the ships uh with a sword there's like another one off to the side that we only see partially we haven't gotten any names for any of these giants again there's a whole theory of like okay some of these are probably because we saw Umo and Kashi are there on the island and some of these other ones might be um uh some of the other giant giants that were part of the uh giant warrior pirates a hundred years ago um and then they might have also just gathered up a couple of new recruits since then um, who didn't join Hyrudian's crew, but are part of this other group. Um, side note, uh, in the anime, in the most recent episodes in the anime, we did get a more confirmation about the fact that um, Hyrudian and his crew, or what would become the new giant warrior pirates later on, were the ones who helped dig out all of the books out of the um, lake in the middle of Ohara. That they were c c confirmed, and Oda confirmed it too in an SBS um that they were part of the giants that were getting all of the books out of the water and helping salt with that so i like how they cover that and we might see some of that um referenced later on again in the arc based around like stuff you know stuff that um vegapunk might say or like later on once we get to like uh you know elbath if like you know Lu you know robin gets to talk with saul and we get some more of that information hopefully um another panel we see dory and Broggy, along with like two of the other giants working around the island i think they're making their way toward the center of the island because that's like where bonnie uh told them that luffy was luffy and sanji and vegapunk were in the center of the island so that's where they're headed um we cut to the holy land of marie Joie, and we see castle pangea and then we cut inside to the room of authority and for the first time in a very long time the room is empty well, it's empty minus the giant demonic black ring lightning filled circle that's sitting in the middle of the room. Um, <laughs> just like someone walked in. Okay. Just like one of the guards walks in. <sighs> Heard a noise. Sirs, are you are. Okay, I guess. Um, well, I'm just going to pretend I didn't see this and then close the door. <laughs> Um, for one of the guards that's waiting outside the room and we see the empty room and then we're getting more of the conversation between um St uh, the stella and shaka and pythagoras and we're having i don't know which one's asking but it's like stella what's that and the stella's like oh this I, I feel like stella's doing like an infomercial or an ad read for a youtube video it's like oh this why this is the answer to everyone's dreams vega coffee <laughs> coming from a person who doesn't drink coffee um with just a drop of it you can transform a mug of water into a warm delicious brew <sighs> ah so <laughs> so how many more minutes do, <laughs> do we have to kill how many more minutes did that kill and uh lots of youtubers are going to make that joke it's like it's like an ad read in the middle of a, <laughs> in the middle of a video um so then we cut back to the island where we're seeing, you know, a little more close-ups of the other stars. One of them has, so one of them has a four. So we saw that Saturn had five when he first showed up. And there was the theory that either it's like, oh, he's five because like blah, 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 blah. And then, you know, the other ones will be one, two, three, and four. Um, this seems to be confirming that we have uh number four and then if they're going in the correct order then it would be three two one around with like saturn in the middle um so then the way that it would line up which i'll go through this in a minute after i go over the different uh <laughs> what vegapunk is saying in the background but so as all the different goro say are you know as the circles are appearing and emerging and everything like that vegapunk is talking over this and he's like it wasn't exactly a strict deadline, but we still have seven minutes. That's either Shocker or Pythagoras talking to Stella. 
And it's like, hmm, let's start a schedule. Even if they try to silence our broadcast, that amount of extra time wouldn't be long enough to stop us. So I think that means that Vegapunk is going to start actually broadcasting or talking about what it was that he had originally recorded the video in order to do. Uh, this, you know, whatever amount of information he's going to release to the world, which the coffee ch chucked off three minutes, and the I guess that means that it takes about three minutes or so, give or take, for I guess the Gorosei to be able to um, do these teleportation and emerging out of these demonic circles and everything, um, which is kind of interesting. So it's like they have like at least that time frame that they have to take in order to get there. Um, which could be useful uh, knowledge for later on uh, in regards to like time delays and stuff like that. Uh, but I guess it depends on like how far they have to travel because like Saturn didn't take very long from him to go to the ship to the island. But these guys are traveling probably hundreds and hundreds of more miles than, you know, from Marie Joie all the way to, you know, Egghead. There's, that's a lot further distance than from ship on the side, a ship that's at island to the middle of the island. Um, <laughs> there's a big difference there. Um, so, um, they're all emerging, and I'm assuming this means that Vegapunk is probably going to actually start his thing, so we don't have to quite hold the timer for, like, ten minutes in order to, like, you know, prevent the Gorosei from doing something. But the Gorosei are here now, so we're going to see how that goes. So we have all of them emerging, with Saturn still in the middle, and then around the outside we have them all showing up. So we get, like, um, the actual names for what each of their different forms are. We do not get confirmation that they are devil fruit powers, but we do at least get confirmations for, like, the different creatures uh, or the different yokai that they are representing. Which some of these yokai I tried to find something about, and I really couldn't find that much about. Um, so I had to go with something else for a picture of it, but, you know, eh, and I didn't want to use someone else's artwork for it to a degree. Um... So, around the outside, we have Saturn in the middle, and then around the outside, um, we have number four. So, Saturn is five in the middle, and he is St. Saturn, St. J. Garcia Saturn, the Gayuku, Gayuki, which is just like another term for like the Ushioni setup that they have, um, is just another variation of that. And then we have number four is St. Marcus Mars. And he is a, I'm going to butcher the name and I apologize. I'm going to butcher a lot of these names. Um, Itsumade. Sorry. Um, and he appears to be a very, well, it kind of looks like a demonic looking bird to a degree. And given we're going to get a better image of it in a minute, but like the silhouette looks very, you know, pointed beak type thing and like as it's like showing we're getting like a better close-up of the face of each of them in the anime we'll see how this ends up pulling off for like introducing each of them individually or probably a little bit more drawn out which is fair um and from what i understand the uh itumare i butchered that um some people were comparing it to like archaeops from pokemon and i'm like i can kind of see that similarity there except a lot creepier and pointier and more disturbing um so it's kind of like a giant lizard bird not like a wyvern but like similar i guess um and then we have number three i guess would be saint top man warkuri who is the hoki um so it's h o with like the little thing over the top k i is what it says um and this seems to be some type of a giant four tusked wild boar or something along those lines where it's like huge tusks coming out of its mouth which fit very well with his mustache um I'm not going to be surprised if like they turn his mustache into more horns coming out of, or more tusks coming out of the boar's mouth some people thought that he kind of looked at like he could be like a mammoth or something like that when they were looking at stuff for the like the initial silhouette and we'll see how these kind of um, other people will probably do much better comparisons of like how these pair up based around like the silhouettes that we saw um, back at Marie Joie when they were, you know, dealing with Sabo. And some of these might line up fairly well. Some of these will be a little bit more of like, well, they were probably more in this form than in this full form. Um, so this is like a demonic boar type thing. Um, I was intending on making like a 
evil Pumbaa joke from The Lion King, but it's like, I actually looked up, are warthogs boars? And it's like, similar classification, not quite the same thing. Okay, fair enough. And then we have number two, which is uh, Saint Ethan Baron V. Nostro, who is a Bakotsu, which seems to be a type of a skeleton-looking horse. And given the fact that when, I believe when we saw his silhouette back at Marijua, he didn't seem to have any horse-like features when we saw it there. And we're going to see later in the chapter when he goes into his hybrid form, or what is the equivalency of a hybrid form in this case, I would assume, um, that he does have like the human top half and then he'll have like the legs of the horse, so like a centaur. Um, Jack, I think, did something similar when he turned into his hybrid form. Um, where his like top half was still the same to a degree and he had like the trunk but then like his legs were like the four mammoth legs and I think that's a little bit more of you know depending on what type of an animal you have for when you shift into the hybrid form but um so he's like a giant type of a skeleton looking horse and I think the thing that I used in the picture here is like a stall horse I think is what it's called from uh, Zelda, which I don't really know that much about, so I apologize. It was the closest looking image I could come up with that looked reasonable enough to what it was. Um, <laughs> I guess I couldn't find an exact thing about this. Um, and there are other people that I know that can do much better breakdowns of what each one of these different, uh, you know, yokai represent, because they are taking on the forms of these different yokai from Japanese uh, myths and legends and everything. And then we have number one, which just seems like it's popping out of the number one star, um, is Saint Shepherd Jupiter, and he's a sandworm. Uh, so I guess Oda is a fan of Dune, um, or, well, I mean, there's giant sandworm type things in, like, Star Wars as well, and in other video games and there's the giant Mars snakes whatever thing that are in Beetlejuice um if I remember correctly um so he just turns into a giant flip off worm um okay um that's just that's that's what he turns into um and, like, Luffy's watching as all of this is happening, and Sanji is currently running away from this, and he's like, I gotta let Nami-san and the others know about what's going on as he's carrying Vegapunk still. And then Luffy's like, there's five of you monsters? So, it's like, he's been having trouble dealing with one of them. Now he's gotta deal with five. Um, and then they're like, although, although, for my video last week where I made the statement of Luffy could tie them all up into a knot, um, he has a giant worm to work with. He could take... <laughs> Jew Peter, grab him, wrap him around all the other ones, tie him into a giant knot, and throw him away. Um, if their powers are not devil fruit related, they're not necessarily going to drown if he throws them into the ocean, but, like, it would still be funny. Okay? Um, <laughs> my, my, my logic still stands on that, I guess. And then we get this great double page spread where we get to see how huge these things are compared to Luffy, who seems to have shrunk back down to his normal size because he's not like in his giant form anymore. He's still in his Nika form, but he's not in his giant Nika form. And we're getting like this huge double page spread that looks freaking awesome with showing off all of them with like, you know, um, <laughs> Gonna have to get used to who's in what form. So yeah, we got Marcus Mars as like the giant bird thing that looks terrifying. All these things look pretty dang terrifying. We got War Curie as like the t four tusked tusted boar. We have you know Shiro as you know the the skeleton horse thing, and then we have um, Jupiter as like the the sandworm thing, and and we've got um, Saturn in the middle in his spider psycho form. Um, as I keep happily referring to it. And all of them have the, um, like, deity smoke ring loop things coming off of their back. So, going off of the notion that, like, Luffy represents Nika, that is, like, the sun god, um, I do not know if any of these have a specific orientation when it comes to, like, a planet that they're associated with. I don't think so, because I don't think anyone found anything that was, like, comparing, like, the Ushioni to, like, Saturn itself in regards to, like, connecting it to, like, the planet Saturn. So I don't think those have anything specifically to do with it. Um, 
I just think this is like a very interesting way of doing it. Um, so, you know, and other people do better breakdowns of like comparing these to the silhouettes and such, um, which is fine in my opinion. Um, but like they just look gigantic and just even more terrifying uh, in front of Luffy and Luffy's like, okay, now there's more of them. So we see them all start to move. Um, the first one that we focus on is Ethan Barron and he starts running out towards the outside of the island and we see him coming upon the pacifista that are all like ringed around the island and he is shifting we see him shift from his human his full you know skeleton horse form into his hybrid form and he still has his sword and he pulls the sword and he slashes through one of the, the mark three pacifista in his hybrid form uh, now one of the things that I did want to point out when it comes to this, and I saw some really cool like colored versions of this that people have already done that look awesome, um, that when he is in the his full skeleton horse form, they have like tattered cloth on the horse, and I don't know if that's supposed to represent like the horse's tattered flesh because it's all skeleton, or if it's just supposed to be like tattered um, cloth that's on the horse itself because that's just how the creature is designed, but. Um, Ethan Barron seems to have like when he's in this hybrid form he still has like the tattered cloth as like his normal you know robe kimono thing that he tends to wear when we see him in the story so that's kind of interesting and he has his sword we still don't get a name on the sword but on the stat sheet I left the sword because that's important and he still uses it since he can go into his hybrid form um, and he slices through one of the Mark III pacifista and it like stops and we have like a bunch of the um a couple of the different marines watching from like the um from the ships that are outside of the island looking in that were being attacked by the pacifista and they watch as this one just stops and falls to its knees and just like stops moving entirely and they're like what something stopped the pacifista and we get to see this other shot as like venus Euro is like running around the perimeter of the island just slashing each of the different Mark III pacifistas one right after the other. And it's going to get explained. He's not slashing them in half to make them like fall apart or something like that. He is freezing them and neutralizing them. So very similar to like what Brooke does when he will like freeze his opponents in place or when he like froze the floor during the battle with Black Maria. Um, seems to be what he is able to do here. So... Um, again, it's like these are demonic type creatures. Saturn seemed to have access to like a poison to a degree. Venus Euro might have access to like a type of a cold type of a thing in regards to like ice, the way that like Brooke can summon like the cold shivers of the underworld or whatever it is and use that. So Venus Euro might be able to do something similar to that with this power. I don't exactly know the full connotations of like what all of these different yokai represent just because they're not something that I'm super versed in. Um, as I said, other people can do a much better job of that than I can. Um, well, like, he's running around the perimeter of the island just slashing them and seems to be moving fast enough that the Marines are not seeing him. So he is moving at a pretty good click. Um, or a pretty good gallop, I guess would be a way of putting it, since he's a horse. And they're like, did you see that? And it's just like, a large horse was spotted galloping down the coastline. A large horse? like the pacifista on this end have all stopped same here are those slash war slow slash marks negative they've been partially frozen so it's like all the different marines or like all the different battleships are like communicating with each other about what's going on so it's like they see this horse thing running around the island but the others can't see it well enough to be able to determine exactly what's going on they just see this thing goes by slices the pacifista and down they fall um and, there, and we see uh, Sanji is using the communicator that's in his ear to contact Nami and the others. And he's like, Nami-san, Robin-chan, anyone come in. It's hard to explain what's going on down here, but we can't waste any more time. We got to get out of here. Um, and so I'm assuming it's uh, Nami calling back and she's like, huh, Sanji-kun, what's going on? And we see this great shot. Or we're going to get a great shot in a second, but first we have um, um, some more information about what's going on with the pacifista 
someone seems to have shown up and seems to be like over looking over a pacifista so i don't know if this is like just like one of the other marines jumped ashore and is like looking over a pacifista or what but they have to send someone over to investigate what the, happened to it and they're like attention all troops the announcement is regarding the falling this announcement is regarding the fallen, fallen pacifista the freezing of their neural circuitry has uh rendered them temporarily paralyzed and it's like yay someone on our side did that that solves the friendly fire problem and then we cut to doberman and he's like this is our chance eliminate bonnie because obviously if they eliminate bonnie then it'll transfer back to whoever has the authority chip or the gorose or whatever um and then we cut to where we see the outside of the fabro sphere and we have um marcus mars is flying up in his creepy bird form <sighs> dragon lizard bird form whatever i mean he looks cool but he looks creepy so you know take it or leave it and what happens is um he is trying to attack and it's uh someone is still talking about bonnie it's like she was heading to the northeast shore with the straw hat crew half of the pacifista have already been uh, neutralized how whoever did it must be an ally and actually as you look underneath as um like where marcus mars is flying up to attack the the labosphere under at the bottom of the island around the center of the page or on the outside of it you can see like venus jura on the warpath as he's like cutting down pacifista after pacifista around the outside of the island so that's pretty cool i like that perspective of like how high up he's flown compared to like just how much um damage venus jura has already done against the pacifista now i would assume there would be a way to like thaw them out but i don't really have anyone with like fire powers at the moment that could be useful in that regard and we have Sanji is still trying to uh, communicate with Nami and the others. And he's like, just focus on escaping. A literal monster is flying up there. You have to run now. So I don't think we actually get to see. Um, okay, no, we do. We do, do get to see Marcus Mars as he like flies at the barrier and tries to attack it. And he does get attacked by the um, lasers as well, by the laser grid. So that's at least something useful. But I don't think that's going to be very useful against him for a long period of time, particularly if he can tank the hits. Now, as we saw with Saturn, Saturn, in taking the hits from Kuma and Luffy and such, was able to heal up pretty dang quickly. But, but, he was the only one in battle at that point in time. And if the theories about all the different Gorosei being connected and being able to draw on one source of stamina and healing is true then one gorose in a battle healing up pretty quickly isn't necessarily going to deplete their reserves all that quickly but if a bunch of them are all using attacks and using powers and getting hit at the same time and all having to draw on the same reserves that could make them heal at least somewhat slower or at the very least be able to run out of stamina faster and healing ability faster which would be useful so, and we're going to see another one of them get um, fairly majorly injured in a, in, in a little bit by the end of the chapter. But first we have, you know, Marcus Mars is attacking the Labosphere. So he's getting electrocuted and hurt in that regard. So that's going to be battle damage that he's going to have to heal from. So we'll see how that goes. And we cut back to Venus Jiro, who is still running around slicing the pacifista. And I do admit he looks pretty dang cool while he's doing it. I can't deny that. Um, this is gonna look awesome when it gets done. And then we have Luffy still on the ground fighting against like the other three kind of terrestrial or not terrestrial, the other three um land based ones. Well, I guess we know Zero is technically land based, but you know, he's really fast. He's probably gonna be like the fastest out of the Gorose, probably. Um, which would be interesting because like a lot of people want to see him fight Zoro, so since they're both swordsmen, clearly we'll see how that goes. Um but Luffy is still dealing with Saturn, Top Man, and um, Jupiter are the three that he would he is currently dealing with. And Saturn is like trying to stab him with like his legs jumping out, trying to stab Luffy. Um, we don't really get to see what Top Man can do in this chapter, but we are going to get to see a little bit of what um, Jupiter is capable of, of his um, sandworm powers. 
and he dives down and starts digging into the island and luffy's watching this and he's like it's digging like a worm well it is a worm luffy i'm not surprised that that's what it's doing um we cut back to the labo sphere um where we have usopp is talking to sanji over the thing and he's like sanji usopp here will be sh uh will be sure to run but zoro and jimbe aren't back yet or someone else says that i think it's probably chopper saying that maybe nami i'm not sure and he's like yeah we met up with brooke and lilith and the ship's uh good to go and we see in the background <laughs> this is funny i love how they stop the ship um a lot of people are like well brooke can make like an ice wall and stop the ship Usopp took that and made a bamboo wall instead he used his like bamboo shoots green star or whatever to, like make a barrier right where the ship was gonna hit and like made the barrier of the bamboo so that like stopped the ship from going over the edge of the cloud so it's fine uh, Sunny's fine little on its little propped up funny but Sunny's fine and they're just like yeah <laughs> and, and Brooke and Lilith are arguing in the background and Brooke's like see I told you it'd work out and Lilith is like kicking Brooke in the legs and she's like thanks to Usopp not you <laughs> I love that <laughs> yay Usopp did something um <laughs> he's like my giant sensei masters are here I have to at least try something so he did that so good on you Usopp and so I was like, yeah, they're still waiting on Jimbei to get back. And Jimbei is, like, calling in on using his, um, his, you know, communication thing. Because they all have, like, the communication things um, and the egghead gear. And Jimbei's like, sounds like the situation is dire. If he's still fighting, I'll drag him back by force. So we're going to get the conclusion to uh, Zoro versus Luchi in a second. And we have Zoro fighting Luchi. We cut to see that Zoro's tossed one of his swords into the air um and he and luchi him and luchi are just arguing as they're fighting and luchi's like isn't it tempting to go find the source of all this strong hockey and so i was like it i think he says it's like cropping up everything so i don't know if that means that like it's just like it's really encroaching on them and it's very you know powerful hockey which all of the goro say having really powerful hockey is not a surprise by any standard of the imagination um and given what we've seen, that would be surprising if they didn't, particularly if they are as old to a degree as we think and having like that amount of willpower, even if subservient to, um, even if being subservient to um, Eam uh, in that case. So they're arguing. Sanji is, so it was like, sorry Jimbei it's all up to you in regards to getting Zoro and J Jimmy's like there 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 they are they're they're still at it and <laughs> J Sanji's like damn Moss said he's putting everyone in danger what a burden and we cut to um uh Luchi tries using an attack that is spotted handgun which is just him trying to look like he's trying to mimic like Luffy like you know gumma gumma no gatling but it's like him trying to stab with his claws which i'm like okay that works and zoro's just like screw this grabs all three swords goes into three swords style not using ashura or anything like that he doesn't even have his bandana on he's just like three sword style spotted leopard hahava hunt and just slices through luchi it's like zoro you could have done that five minutes ago and been more helpful in the other parts of the situation that are going on here um, but he seems to take down Lucci pretty quickly, so that's good. Um, we cut to where we see, like, Lucci looks like he's knocked out, and we don't really see the end result of Zoro, but he may have, I don't know, that may have taken more out of him than Zoro thought it would. Um, but, like, Jimbei's there to get Zoro, and Zoro defeated Lucci, so insert Tarzan joke here of him defeating a leopard. <sighs> because I'm the Disney dork. Um from there we cut back to where luffy is dealing with um saturn work uh workury and uh jupiter and luffy still in his sneaker form is in the sky and out of the ground comes jupiter and <coughs> swallows luffy gobbles him up out of the forest area or the tree line bursts Dory and Bragi, and they're just like, oh, and they're like, did you see him? And he's like, what a nostalgic face in regards to, like, seeing Luffy and being happy to see Luffy. And it's just like, the dark belt, a dark belly is no place for someone like that. Let's go. 
and they run forward and i love this as like their way to be reintroduced to luffy after like over two years probably closer to like two and a half to three years at this point in time just given how long it's been i love this and it's like them coming forward dory on one end broggy on the other just slicing um jew peter into like thirds to a degree and Luffy like popping out of like where is where he would have been in like the guy's and Jupiter's neck and being swallowed and Luffy's just like yay so it's like well that's one way you get out of it because like he was swallowed by you know Kaido previous in the previous arc during his battle but it's like this way is just like well I guess that's a different way to get out of there and Jupiter we we don't see him heal in this but it's assumed that like he's probably going to be able to heal from this it may take a dash more but it's also like he's getting attacked at the same time that like you know Marcus Mars is like trying to fight against the Labo phase so that's not going to help so that's two things they got to try to heal at the same time if they have the same reserves of energy to heal from if not We'll find out in next chapter. And they're like, uh, one of them was like, Child of the... Uh, so I think this might be the name of the attack, is Child of the Sawing Sun. Um, that might be the name of the attack, I'm not sure, but like, Luffy is so happy to see them, and I love the look on his face. He's just like, hang on, the old-timer giants are here too! And he's just like so happy. Um, because like, Luffy really loved getting the, you know, getting to meet Dorian Bragi back on Little Garden. He loved that, so I love that this is just like him going, yay! Um, and they're just like, both Dorian Bragi are just laughing. <laughs> um, and it's like, it's been too long, Straw Hat, and it's just like, we had to come see you. The waiting around was getting unbearable. <laughs> <laughs> so I love that and they're just both laughing which is just so, so fun um I love Dorian Procky they're great um and I'm so glad that they're back uh so Luffy has been reunited with them Usopp pulled up some pulled off something good in regards to using the bamboo javelins in order to stop the sunny so that's like his little contribution thing right now but he's like I gotta step it up and show my masters how strong I've gotten type of a thing is probably what's going through Usopp's mind at this point in time so that's good um Jupiter got a good chunk of damage done to him there but we'll see how long that takes for him to heal from um and then we'll see what else happens here I mean like between Dory and Bragi they could at least probably help provide some support to Luffy at this point in time and even if like even if Jupiter is able to heal himself okay I think if I'm remembering correctly um because I know that some worms if they are attacked in certain parts of their body because I know that there are some lizards that like they can you know you know their tails can be dropped if they're in the middle of danger and like if their tail gets grabbed by something they can like detach their tail and like run off and their tail will regrow um I think there are some worms who can do something similar to that where like they will you know if they're in danger or something like that or if they get like part of their end of their body is eaten they can regrow part of it so that might be something that Jupiter has the ability to do um but we also saw Saturn be able to heal himself anyway so like the others all being able to heal themselves is not going to be surprising it just depends on like if they're all drawing from the same source how quickly they diminish that source and if more of them are getting injured at the same time you know if so many of them get injured at the same time then how much damage is that going to cause um I, uh, looking back at Zoro's face after like he defeated Luchi, Zoro looks very determined and he's got like the hockey coming off of him because he had like the black hockey. Um, whether or not that's him using his Conqueror's hockey or not is a little bit left up for debate, but I wouldn't be surprised if he did use that against Luchi as like a show of force, which makes sense in my opinion. Since like Luchi was taunting him. Um, you know, because Luchi likes to do that. Um, so we'll see what ends up happening with that if like if like Zoro is kind of like down for the count a little bit I hope not I hope Zoro's not down for the count but we'll see what's going on here I don't think the Straw Hats at this point in time because Luffy doesn't 100% know about what's going on with the announcement there's like he could hear part of it coming from like Vegapunk doing the announcement and starting it because like Saturn could hear it too so Luffy was hearing a little bit of that but 
And Luffy might be like, okay, well, I need to buy time so my crew can escape. But then even if, like, Sanji is able to get to where the rest of the crew is, if Sanji is able to get to where the other giants are, then that's good. And then if, like, you know, Nami and Usopp and Chopper along with Lilith and Brooke and Robin um, and Edison all end up... Because I don't think we saw Edison. Was Edison... We did not see Edison in that last panel. We saw Chopper in the cho in the panel where we saw Usopp and Nami and what they did with the ship. We didn't see Edison there at all. Um, but we saw, um, yeah, Lilith is there arguing with Brooke, which is just funny. Um, and they're probably gonna, like, when they animate that in the scene in the anime, they'll probably give Usopp a little bit more of, like, you know, dragging out the tension and then him using, you know, his bamboo javelin star in order to make the javelins, the, the bamboo show up and, like, act as, like, the barrier to prevent the sunny from, um, falling off. Plus, they still have... Well, they still have the Frankie Shogun that they can use to, like, adjust the ship and get it into the right position so they can all get on the ship. Um, and they gotta get Robin on the ship because she's still, like, on the gurney thing, so they gotta do that. But then there's the whole bit of, like, they need to get off the island as soon as possible. But there's the whole thing of, like, Jinbei can drag Zoro back to the back to the ship or back to where the giants are. That's not a problem. Same thing with, like, Sanji can try to get like Vegapunk's body somewhere and he may just end up having to leave the body because like Vegapunk's you know mind is still alive inside of Lilith and Edison and technically York but they need to find a way to like disconnect York from like you know punk records if that's a possibility um so we'll see what happens there plus they have Atlas as well I know a lot of people are like I don't think Atlas is going to survive I'm like I would like as many of them to survive as possible, but we'll see what happens. Um, <laughs> given the fact that the um, the recording that Vegapunk is airing has Stella, Shaka, and Pythagoras in it, and if Atlas happens to show up during the recording of it, or during while well, the message is going off, um, then that would be something. But the other side of that might be um, if there is the theory, because I know there is a theory that, like, the reason they're, like, they were, like, taking ten minutes to do this is, like, yeah, they want to get everybody ready so they can, like, reveal this information. And then they're going to do that. <laughs> reveal a ton of this information about, like, the truth of the world. Not everything, but a ton of it. Um, there is the theory that, like, oh, Robin might be able to, like, hop on and say something about, like, in the, the real name of the kingdom of the ancient kingdom is blah 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 and that might cause some stirs or depending on stuff if um Lilith and Edison are able to like hack into something they could like hack in and show the actual footage of like what's happening on Egghead Island and reveal like the, the Gorosei's forms to the rest of the world because as extremely taboo as that would be I don't think that would give the Gorosei the ability to just, like, blow up the heads of everybody else in the world <laughs> just because they saw those images. I think they have to be within, like, a certain range for them to be able to do that. Um, plus, that would be a way of circumventing and having a bunch of the people on uh, the Navy ships, if they have, like, the visual dent and Mushi, if they've all activated, <clears throat> then they'll be able to, like, look and be like, oh my god, this is what's happening here type of thing and it's like do we really want to keep serving the giant freaking demon things that are based off of things we're told to be terrified of uh, terrified of as kids <laughs> that's the thought um so we'll see what happens there but um that's what i have for this other people can probably with much better knowledge of yokai could do a much better breakdown of um what all the different Gorosei forms are and everything like that but i do just i love the double page spread that they did where it shows all of them together in their forms and just looking freaking badass and it's like the supreme overseers of the world government the five elder planets just looks awesome in that regard i love that design um so that's what i have i thank you for watching i hope you enjoyed the video um and i hope you have a nice rest of your day bye